Yo, yo gamers, nature here. Today, we're gonna go over everything you need to know when it comes to gear going into phase two for Hunter and WoW season of discovery. As always, like and subscribe, it really helps. Full disclosure here, there's so much we don't know about phase two, so we're going to have to take a lot of this with a grain of salt, and we're going to focus on what we do know going into the next phase. Let's dive right into it. Before we get started, I wanted to highlight there's a quest you can complete starting at the beginning of phase two that allows you to teleport directly to the entrance of Novergon. This is a horde only, and I'll link the full guide in the description below. That's a must watch and complete for all horde, and you can pick up the quest right at level 25 at the beginning of phase two on the launch for some easy experience. Now, I won't spend a ton of time here going over any phase one items. I'm just gonna cover items that would be relevant for phase two. And based on phase one, we can assume hopefully correctly and not incorrectly that most of your BIS will be found in Nomergon. So this is probably going to be a pre-BIS list with some of the items not replaced in Nomergon defaulting to phase BIS similar to phase one. Blizzard also stated there will be new ways to level in the game, and some of those options could offer better rewards. We'll have to cross the bridge when we get there. For the Helm slot, the easy option is we'll want to keep Twilight Slayer's Cow for the set bonuses. 12 AP and 1% hit is kind of nutty and is equal to about 12 agility and pushes up the value on this item. However, if we do not have this helm or Artemis Cal in phase one, and we're struggling for a good helm on Alliance, we do have Lord Drek helmet. This is technically your phase one or phase two Prebus. This is going to be a struggle and will fall under the category of not worth it to most players. With that being said, this quest line can be started at level 40 and also provide Centurion leg plates that give 15 agility and 15 strength for plate users. That's pretty insane for the plate players, so you shouldn't have trouble getting help at the beginning of the phase to do this quest. As a side note, you'll normally have to kill two level 52 elites, which is a big challenge for level 40s. If you're in a smaller group, there is a trick to separate the two elites and fight them one at a time, I'll walk you through it. Step one, obtain the quest Rise Obsidian in Searing Gorge. Again, this is Alliance only. Step two, click on the altar of Centura. Step three, run away and get up the nearby ramp. Step four, from the ramp, you can watch Obsidian and Lotharic the Black from a safe distance. Step five, wait five minutes. Lotharic the Black will now despawn and leave Obsidian standing alone. Step six, you'll now have a five minute window to engage Obsidian before he also despawns. Step seven, simply kill Obsidian and you'll be able to do that with him solo at this point. Step eight, you'll wait until the altar is clickable again. Step nine, open your reputation panel and set Booty Bay to at war. Step 10, click the altar again. Step 11, you'll now be able to attack and kill Lothar the Black before he summons Obsidian. The trick is to set Booty Bay to at war in order to attack him before he summons Obsidian. You will not be able to attack him if you did not set Booty Bay to at war. Again, this is for Alliance only. On Horde, you'll really only have Warden's Wizard's Hat, a random world drop, or Nightscape Headband as an easy to get leather working BOE if you did not have a Phase 1 BFD Helm. On Neck, we have Scouts and Sentinels Medallion for obtaining Revered with Warsong Gulch. Hopefully we just did this in Phase 1 since that was our Phase 1 BIS. There's no reason not to assume that this would also be our phase two bis or a very strong phase two item. As a side note here, we can pick up a free upgrade at level 28 while we are leveling. Shoulders, we have some options. The most common item you'll see is Nightscape Shoulders, which you only need 210 leather working to make. 
Side note, this is a rare spawn pattern at one of the two leatherworking supply vendors, one in Feralis for the Horde or in the Hinterlands for the Alliance, but should be purchasable on the auction house fairly cheap as it's really easy mats to obtain. Now, my favorite is actually Failed Flying Experiment. It has one less Agi, but 10 strength and is great for any melee weavers. This is obtained from completing rescue 00x-22-fe. This is for both Horde and Alliance. However, it's not easy by any means. I'm going off memory here, but I believe there's four waves of three to four mobs all around the level 40 to 43 range. Now you can actually cheese this quest as a hunter by first one pre-clearing all the yetis in the area, then two for each of the spawns that occur while you're doing the quest, you'll place your pet on stay or hold, sending it ahead and aggroing the waves when they spawn. Then you'll actually run these mobs to Narnia with your pet so the mechanical chicken can just walk freely by and never aggro. You'll need to have dash or dive to pull this off. And if you're not familiar with this quest, it will take a few times. So as a new player, I'd suggest to bring a group. This is going to be similar to War Lordrak Helm mentioned earlier, where most melee players will need this item anyway, and it will be easy to find a group for the quest chain. We also have Forest Tracker e -pilots which can be argued as Prebus as far as we know, in Flintrock Shoulders, which can be Prebus for PvP. I didn't mention these first because they are both fairly rare BOEs, but they're both great options for those that are lucky or have the means to purchase them on the auction house. For Cloak, the first thing we'll want to do is complete Bloodsail Buccaneer's quest while leveling. This is obtained by looting the scroll located on the crate just west of the exit of Booty Bay into STV. When we turn in this quest for just looting the scroll, it will provide us with Keep an Eye Out, which will give us Dark Tide Cape as a reward. This 6 Agi and 7 Sam Cloak is great starter cloak for those that did not have Phase 1 Bis Cloak or our second pre Bis PvP Cloak. After that, we have Tiger Strike Mantle as our Prebus PvP Cloak, Imperial Cloak, both as Random World Drops and Parachute Cloak as an Engineering Level 225 Craftable Cloak. All three of these have eight agility. Now, none of these three cloaks are really easy or cheap to get as they are rare Random Drops, except the Engineering Parachute Cloak. So Engineers will have a one-up here. If you're not Engineering, you'll want to loot or look for the other two in the auction house. Side note, I always remember doing big jump downs in Nomergon, so the parachute cloak will be my personal go-to out of any option, especially since I speedrun, I already can imagine some pretty fun uses for this item. If you really want to get frisky on your Prebus, we also have Dark Hooded Cape, which is a eight to 10% rare drop off of Nemar the Slayer, who is a rare spawn in the southeast corner of Arathi Highlands. When it comes to chests, I'm a huge fan of sticking with Twilight Slayer's tunic from Phase 1, assuming we got 3-piece in Phase 1. You get that 12 AP plus 1% hit, which is equal to about 12 agility. We touched base on that earlier. With that being said, it's technically not your Prebus. For Alliance, we can get Blazewind Breastplate. This is a beast of an item. This is obtained by first completing a relatively easy quest called Mirages in the Badlands. Second, we'll complete Tremors of the Earth. This quest line is much harder. You'll need to find boss Thogrun. He's a level 41 to 42 mob that walks around with a band of five ogres randomly patrolling through the Badlands. As a hunter, we can kind of cheese this quest in a couple of ways. The small shaman ogre typically in the back of this pack, can be pulled and only boss Sogren plus that ogre will aggro. This doesn't always work, and if you can't get that to work, you always can do a good old kite and kill and distance and despawn the other ads while keeping the tag active on boss Thogren. 
The easiest way to do this is by sending your pet in from a different angle and using Dive or Dash to aggro all the mobs, then sending it to Narnia while you tag Boss Sogren and kite him away. Using Frost Nova Trap on the group of mobs will help as well. For Horde players that cannot do this quest and don't have Phase 1 equivalent items or are piecing apart their set, we also have Nightscape Tunic, which uses ultra cheap materials and is made by leather workers at level 205. This will be very easy to get item as it's learned from the trainer as well. It's also worth mentioning a couple really rare BOEs, especially for Horde players, that if you're super lucky or have the means to auction house, the item we have Wolf Fear Harness and Quillword Harness. For Bracers, this is where you'll wish you focused Warsong Gulch in Phase 1. The only real viable option for pre-raid BIS and probably BIS for the phase is Forest Stalker's Bracers. This is obtained by getting exalted with Warsong Gulch. Just to give you an idea how good these are, one of your better pre-raid options at level 60 is Beast Stalker's Bracers. That only has one more agility and no strength making these better in my eyes. I know there's a couple better items that are for level 60, but let's be real. This is level 40 content and I can't imagine you'll get better than this epic level item. We also have Imperial Leather Bracers, a rare BOE world drop, or the most common item you'll see, Dusky Bracers, as a very easy to get level 185 leather working item that is made of cheap materials and also learned from the trainer. Gloves will most likely just use Void Touch Leather Gloves, the Phase 1 Epic, assuming we already have this. It's worth mentioning, technically, the Gloves of Holy Might is better than Void Touch Leather Gloves. However, this is an ultra rare world drop and most likely will be out of reach for most players and very expensive on the auction house. If we don't have either of these, Alliance and Horde have a great quest item available called Pratt's Handcrafted Gloves for Alliance or Jangor's Handcrafted Gloves for Hordes. We get this by completing Mark of Quality, which has you collect 10 thick Yeti hides by killing the Yetis in the middle of the zone. You can also get these by skinning Yetis, which can speed up your process, especially if this is being heavily farmed when you arrive. Two things, as a side note here, one, this quest also provides a great pre-raid option for boots for both Alliance and Horde. The boots are third pre-raid, but beaten by ultra rare blue BOEs that has two more agility or imperial leather boots that have the same agility plus five strength so these are going to be a very good option these are your easy to get boots for the phase also second note here these two items are listed under shadow skin gloves on 60 upgrades however if you're running aspect of the lion this item is equal to it and if you're also weaving prats and jangers will be better with that being said shadow skin gloves is a great choice as well especially for an alt where you're looking for an easy to grab item on the auction house. This can be made by a level 200 leather worker that buys the rare pattern from Rizquick, the leather working supply vendor in Booty Bay. For belt, we have many options that are close. The pre bis as of now is Scorpashi Sash and we have Ogren Sash close behind, which are rare world drops. If phase two is anything like phase one, will want to grind a Rathi Basin rep, and we have Highlanders or Defiler's Chain Girdle, which is obtained at Honored. I don't know if this is true at all, but as a speculation, it's possible they make level 40 equivalent items for shoulder or cloak slot. As these are both great items, it would make a Rathi rep much more appealing and similar to phase one. A big if, but if this is done, this three set bonus, which is 1% crit, and that the shoulders and cloak potentially would be epic sat weighted level 40 items, you would for sure want to grab these as well. With that being said, the barrier entry for Prebus would be either Defkin Belt for the Horde. I have the whole quest line in my phase one guide if you need assistance 
or Dusky Belt for Alliance, which is made from a level 195 leather worker and learned from the trainer, as well as having cheap mats like the previous Dusky items. Legs is easy, assuming the quest line is still available in Phase 2, we will want to complete Rig Wars for Horde or the Grand Betrayal for Alliance to obtain Trip Runner Dungarees. It's worth noting right now this is turned off in Phase 1, and it's only a, an assumption that this will be turned on for Phase 2. This quest is started on the Horde with Nog and Ogremar, or High Tinker Mechatork and Iron Forge. For Horde and Rig Wars, we'll need to locate two items. One is Rig Blueprints. It is located behind the third pillar from the right from Thermoplug's room. It is on the ledge. Second item, which is Thermoplug Safe Combination, we get from killing Mechaneer Thermoplug. On Alliance for the Grand Betrayal, we just need to kill Thermoplug and it's GG. Now, with that being said, we're not 100% sure if that quest line will be in the game. The reason I'm assuming it will be is because Blizzard did state the quest line for the Horde, which does the transporter to Nomergon that I mentioned at the beginning before I started going into gear, that quest line should be in the game. And part of that quest line is actually to pick up Rig Wars for the Horde. So I'd assume this quest line would be active for both Horde and Alliance. Now, with that being said, technically Basilisk Hide Pants is our pre-raid bis, but it is an ultra rare BOE world drop, which is why we should focus on Trip Runner Dungarees first. As a side note, the Trip Runner Dungarees is not technically a pre-raid item since we have to do Nomergon to get this item. Assuming this quest is in the game though, this should be your focus. There's some other rare world drop BOEs we can grab in the meantime, or Dragonflight Leggings, which is obtained by completing Set Them Ablaze, a level 52 quest that we can pick up in Searing Gorge at level 40 and complete by burning four towers in the zone. All these leggings, though, will either be hard to get or expensive on the auction house. If you're not willing to pay a hefty price, the easiest choice is to get pre-raid ready is Dusky Leather Leggings, this is made by a level 165 leather worker. Like the other dusky item, it's, it's very cheap to make. However, this pattern is a random world drop, so it'll be a little bit harder to get week one. When it comes to boots, we touched base on it earlier, but Swamp Walker boots are technically your pre bis followed by Imperial leather boots, but these are decently rare world drops. Most of us will settle for, e settle for either one of three items, either Pratt's or Jangdor's handcrafted attained from Mark of the Quality quest I went over earlier in the gloves section, Dusky Boots, which is made by a level 200 leather worker off a rare pattern dropped in Scarlet Monastery, or Twilight Slayer's foot pads, assuming we have the other set items from Phase 1 BFD that boost our stats. I also touched base on it earlier, but the set bonus on Twilight 3 piece adds 12 AP and 1% hit, which is equivalent to about 12 agility. So it's not our pre-raid bis, but it is a great option and shouldn't be overlooked out of pure simplicity for those who already have the three set piece going into phase two. For rings, we gotta mention Mason's Fraternity Ring. Now, like phase one, we can probably assume this quest line would be turned off as it's above Nomergon level dungeon content. And phase one, anything above BFD dungeon content was turned off as well. It's sod, so that's not a guarantee to be there. But even if it's not there this phase, you'll want to see this quest because you will want to grab this for next phase. It's a must grab for all hunters since it has 13 agility and stamina to boot. To get this, You'll complete Divino Matic Rod simply by killing Sergeant Bly in Zulfarak. He is part of the event at the top of the temple and is part of the standard clearing process of ZF. Let's just assume, however, that is not available. So that's my hunch. Sorry. Next up, we have two rare world drops we can look for on the auction house, Ring of the Underworld and Fal Falcon's Hook. 
Then for those not looking to drop a lot of gold, if they aren't super lucky, we have Legionnaire's Band um, for the Horde and Protector's Band for Alliance from Honored Rep with Warsong Gulch. Alongside Iron Spine's Eye, a 40% drop rate off Iron Spine in Scarlet Monastery. Trinkets, first I gotta pause and mention an amazing hunter item is Nifty Stopwatch. This quest line starts at level 35 and is not only amazing leveling, but gives us one of the best items in the game for speedrunning and PvP. Now, before we even get started with this quest line, we want to grab a couple of things. In fact, we can grab most of these items now in phase one. We'll want to get times one gyro chronatum. Uh, that's my guess times one frost oils. Now this won't be available until phase two, but I'm assuming this will be on the auction house pretty quickly as people will want to get it out there to make gold. The next three items are not required to get the nifty stopwatch, but I'd recommend to bring them for some easy experience. Times one healing potion, times one lesser invisibility potion, and times one patterned bronze bracers. Once we're ready and we head out to Searing Gorge, I'd recommend to be either level 38 or 39 to do the quest, since you will have to kill a level 45 elemental at the end, but it is definitely doable earlier. I actually plan on doing this right at level 35 as soon as I can pick up the quest. Step one, we'll pick up gyro dot dot what and turn in the gyro chronatum. Step two, we'll pick up coolant heads prevail and turn in our frost oil. Step three, we will have three quests of study of the elementals, which has us kill three different sets of rock elementals spread throughout the zone. Step four, we pick up this is going to be hard, which leads us to talk to Lucian Tossel Wrench next to him to then kill a level 45 elemental that spawns there as well. Upon completing step four, we get the nifty stopwatch item. Step five and six are not simp are not necessarily, but we simply talk to him again and turn in the last three items for an extra experience. GG. We also need to mention Tidal Charm. This is a 50% drop rate off a rare and Arathi Highlands called Prince Nasjak. Now, this is typically farmed very heavily, so good luck trying to get it. Any PvP or worth their grain and salt is not only going to know the timer, they're going to have alts on all the layers and those level one alts are going to tell them when it spawns and they'll be right there to log in and try to get this. So it's very hard to get, but if you can get a hold of it at a, as a hunter, this is an insane PVP item. There's also going to be some fun engineering items as well available in this phase and engineering, just to warn you, will be extremely strong this phase. Like, literally stronger phase two than any other phase in WoW history unless something changes. If you're not spec engineering as a hunter, I'd highly suggest a change. Warning here, when I say this, keep in mind there might be other epic items like phase one Void Touch leather gloves that might appear, so don't go dropping off your professions just yet. This is just my hunch. What I plan to do is use gold I saved during phase one, to level both leatherworking and engineering. I understand this isn't an option for everyone. With that being said, we have available sapper charges, Gnomish Universal Remote to possibly mind control mechanical units in Gnomergon, Mechanical Dragonling, we'll touch on base on that later, but it's super strong, Gnomish Netomatic for PvP, Gnomish Shrink Ray, Goblin Mortars, Gnomish Cloaking Device for Speedruns or PvP, Goblin Jumper Cables, Parachute Cloak, which can be used to make some of those big jumps down in Gnomergon, Gnomish Mind Control Cap. My assumption here is we'll use Avengers Void Pearl plus a new trinket, Blizzard Creates, which is similar but stat weighted to level 40. Now, with that being said, we don't know if that's true and it doesn't make engineering trinkets unviable. The big highlight for me that should be rotated in your setup for engineering is mechanical draggling trinket. 
this item scales to your engineering level. I'm not 100% sure, but based off of Wowhead's description, it starts at level 40 at 200 engineering when you can learn the pattern, then goes up um, a level each five engineering skill gained. This means if you're level 225 engineering, it would be a level 45 NPC that lasts for one minute and can be used once an hour. That's pretty strong. It's not exactly the Grinch level, uh, but it's not useless. It's going to be a great item to have uh, for PvP and for PvE. It's really, really strong. Also on the trinket slot, we have Goblin Mortar. This does 383 to 517 fire damage and stuns the targets in a 5-yard radius on a 10-minute CD. This trinket has 6 charges and can be used by an engineer, but can be reloaded by a goblin engineer for cheaper. In trinket, I think there's a ton of things viable that are available, even items I didn't mention. We will have Fane Death before level 40, and with the lack of massive trinkets available that kind of dwarf all the engineering options, it'll be a lot of fun utilizing Fane Death and swapping in between boss fights and encounters to min-max all these trinkets. There's even non-engineer trinkets that are viable, some where you get hit and you get stats. It's going to be a crazy phase for hunters and trinkets, um, and I'm excited for it. We'll also want to highlight you can get with engineering sapper charges, which are an on-use consumable that does 450 to 750 fire damage AOE on a five-minute CD. Great for those big AOE pulls. There's solid dynamite for 213 to 287 damage in a five-yard radius on a one-minute CD. As a side note, easy throw dynamite is the exact same as solid dynamite and can be picked up on the auction house for non-engineers so for this phase at least non-engineers have a little bone here it's worth mentioning for those that are not interested in min maxing and not wanting to roll engineering don't worry you'll still get great value out of your hunter i don't think you'll have any trouble getting into 99 percent of raids even if you don't spec engineering but if you're looking for the best and what's best to do Engineering should be really, really strong phase two. Before we hop over to weapons, let's touch base on the enchants we'll want for the phase. For cloak slot, we have plus three agi to cloak. For chest slot, we have plus two stats all chest. On bracers, we can go a couple different ways. Plus one agi is your bis for the phase. That's what I'm going to do, but you can do stamina. Um, you can even do intellect or um, there is a plus seven spirit depending on how you're playing. That's really, really strong as well. Glove slot, you get plus five agility. Don't forget for PVPers, we can grab a rugged armor kit to provide 40 armor on our pants slot. For boots, there's plus three agility. For weapons, there is no agility enchant yet, so we'll just want to grab plus five impact for two-handers and plus three impact for one-handers, assuming we weave our in melee at all. For enchants, um, we also have some options here. For melee weavers, the first thing we want to look for is do we have wind fury? You'll want to just go with wind fury if you're in any group that provides it. Now, if you do not have Wind Fury or if you never melee weave, there's a couple options here. We do know that in BFD, we have the Sharpening Stone, which provides 2% hit. I'm assuming there's going to be some type of Sharpening Stone available in Nomergon as well. That'll probably be the Abyss if you're not getting Wind Fury. But then we also can pick up Mana Oil. This cancels out your Wind Fury, but it provides MP5 for those that are not planning on melee weaving lastly on the scope for our range weapons technically gnomes can get to 240 engineering skill since they have a plus 15 engineering racial this means they can craft sniper scopes as far as i'm aware and i hope i'm wrong here gnomes are the only race or item that provides any plus engineering skill so assuming Blizzard doesn't like hard lock gnomes at 225 for some reason, they should pretty much be broke this phase when it comes to engineering. 
and they'll be able to do some extra things like use Gnomus Battle Chicken, which is insanely good, Goblin Rocket Helm for PvP, and they'll be able to craft the Sniper Scope for us. If you're a Horde player, since we don't have Gnomes or an equivalent racial, you'll want to just look for Sniper Scopes on the Neutral Auction House for the plus seven ranged weapon damage. If it's not an option, maybe early in the phase, or if, like I said, Blizzard could hard lock it, I doubt they'll do that. There's no reason for it. But if they did, we can pick up Deadly Scope for the plus five ranged weapon damage. Now, let's go over everyone's favorite topic, which is weapons. For melee weavers, in light of some new fancy rune, we'll still want to stay two-handers. Hopefully, we grabbed Guardian's Trident Phase 1 because this is a great option. If we have the means, there's an ultra-rare blue world drop called Manslayer that can be farmed in RFK. This thing not only is the best in slot range for a two-hander, but hits like a truck for 88 to 133 damage, meaning it does equivalent melee damage as Deadly Strike of the Hydra, the Epic and BFD. This thing is a beast. Grab it if you can, and it has 38 attack power, making it your best for range as well in two-handers. Um, assuming we don't have either of those two options, there is Armor Piercer, you can solo this at level 40 easily, and it drops off Razorfin, Spearhide, and RFK as a 60% drop rate. This is going to be your easy grab. As a side note, if you want something that hits a little harder, your third pre for two-handers is Headhunting Spear. It's a 1% drop rate off the Bloodscale Headhunters found in the northwest section of STV. With all that being said... One of the best level 40 items you'll see for Hunter, this hits really hard for your melee, has 1% crit, but the big kicker for PvPers, this is a 5-10% to chance to proc a 21-30 to frost damage ability that also slows your target by 50% for 5 seconds. Yes, you guessed it, it's the frost weapon for melee weavers, this is an insanely good, since it hits so hard, I'd put this as third Prebus for weavers, but for PvPers, this is Prebus number one for me, and possibly even the Phase Bis as a PvP item. Depending on what drops in Nomergon, this proc is pretty darn good and is a must grab for PvPers. Best of all, it's craftable by any level 200 blacksmith who has the pattern. It is a rare random world drop, but will certainly be available early on into phase two. For one-handers, the first item is Vanquisher Sword. This is obtained from Bring the End in Honor City for Horde or Bring the Light in Stormwind for Alliance. This is obtained then from killing Amnanar in Razorfin Downs to complete the quest and is easily our pre bis one-hander. Next, I just grab one of the following items. The Sentinels or Scouts Blade from obtaining Revered with Warsong Gulch is going to be one of the easier items to grab, assuming you already hit Revered in Phase 1. It's even possible they might stat weight this to level 40, similar to the weapons in Phase 1 being stat weighted to 25. This might give it an extra agility, which would be great. For Horde, we also can complete Weapons of the Spirit and Feralis for plus 9 agility as a one-handed axe. For Alliance, we don't want to farm, if or we don't want to farm Warsong Rep, the following four items are pretty equivalent. We can just pick up one of these. We can grab Blue gl Glittering Axe on the Auction House, crafted by level 220 Blacksmith as a random world drop, Nordic Longshank dropping an Aldemon off Balog as a 10% rate. Or for the rich gold players, we have Jinsu Sword or Speed Steel Rapier, uh, both rare BOE blue world drops. Lastly, on gear, we have ranged weapons. I think a great starting point would either be Ashari Arbalist from Phase 1, Mithril Blunderbuss, which is a level. 205 engineering taught by the trainer or outrider's bow 
Same thing as the dagger. This could be stat weighted to level 40 and a little bit better than it is right now. But all three of these items are basically equivalent as it stands. These are easy to get items and should be the bare minimum starting point going into phase two. Next upgrade from there would be Mithril Heavy Bore Rifle. This is a 2.9 attack speed and provides plus 14 ranged attack power. This can be crafted by any 220 engineer and is also purchased on the auction house. It's not a crazy big upgrade, but it's big enough to make the jump when you're ready and available. For most, this will be good enough to go until you get to Nomergon level range weapons. However, for those who are either insanely lucky or farm their credit cards, we have three items that are better. The silencer, I'd steer clear of this because melee will want it um, and drive up the price. Shadow Forge Bushmaster, this will be the cheapest of the three items I mentioned, but a great BOE. And finally, Bow of the Searing Arrows. I'd assume this will be close to Biss for the phase since it's a level 37 stat weighted epic item. 2.7 attack speed and does damage proc to boot. Now, I'd be shocked if there isn't an item or two better in Nomergon, but you can't really stat weight that much higher than, than this bow. So this would be an insane pre-raid grab for anyone and could be viable as a number one through number three option for the phase. Wow, we covered a lot. Now, I'm not a miracle worker. I intentionally skipped some things that are viable for various reasons and i gotta have an error or two covering all this off the top of my head just giving through wowhead and 60 upgrades please take a second when you find an error or two and throw it in the comments below i'm going to put out a couple more videos for us hunters going into phase two and some of the things we figured out already are pretty insane they kind of blew my mind to be honest so i'm as always Make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps. I appreciate the support. I'm a very small YouTuber, so hopefully this buys me some spicy chicken wings for me and my son. In fact, if you love chicken wings, go get you some. Now, obviously, I ran out of things to say. So until next time, hunters, peace.